Well, let's do turn to God's word, uh, Psalm 119. I'll read verses 9 through 16. This is God's holy word. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. Learning is not just something you do when you move to a new church. Uh, Learning is something that you do because you're human. Uh, Learning is is something that's built into you. Animals can learn, we know that, uh, but we also know they're nothing like us uh, as, as created in God's image with our unique ability to know and to learn. That's something we're designed for. And that's what this passage is about. It's about learning, but it's about learning in uh, the ultimate sense, the greatest and most important sense, learning to know God, learning to know God. And this is important because on this topic especially, for whatever reason, we are not always very good learners. This is something that we are often Uh, very slow to pursue, very slow to succeed at, at any way. And yet it's the most important topic. And so the good news I want you to hear today is that God is inviting you to know him. And not only is he inviting you to learn to know him, but he's also teaching you how to do that. So I want us to consider that under two headings today that will help us think about how to become better learners as we seek to know God. First is this. If you want to be a better learner, you need to develop a concerned heart. Develop a concerned heart. And the concern will go two directions. I want to talk about a positive concern, that is, what is it you want, and the negative concern. What are the things that keep you from getting what you want? First, the positive concern. As we come into verses 9, 10, and 11, we have uh, positive concerns stated from three different directions. First, there's a concern to be pure. How can a young man keep his way pure? How, how can he be undefiled? How can he live with a clean conscience before God and before man? That's a concern of the psalmist. Verse 10, with all my heart I have sought you. He is a concern to find God. He is seeking God. He's concerned about whether he will find him. And then verse 11, he says, your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. As he finds God, as he knows God, he does not want that relationship to break. He wants to live in relationship with God. He doesn't want sin uh, to be destroying that relationship. And so that, that brings back to the first concern, and we see really all these together are showing us that one concern of knowing God. Why the purity? Why does he not want to sin? It's because he wants God. He wants to know God. Does that concern you? Are you interested in knowing God? You know, it's easy to be concerned about all sorts of things, even religious sorts of things, and to miss that as a target. You know, you maybe you're concerned about going to heaven. I, I think you should be concerned about that. I think that's legitimate. But consider what Jesus says as he speaks on that topic. In John chapter 17, as Jesus prays to the Father, John 17, verse 3, he says, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Maybe you're concerned about being a good person. I think that's also a good concern. I, I like good people better than bad people. You know, maybe that's something you want. You want to live uh, not just in a trite way. You want to live properly before God and before other people, doing what's right. Jesus talks about that as well. Matthew 
chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, Jesus talks about some who have done many good deeds, who have wanted to be good people. He says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will to declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Or maybe you have a concern to understand the bigger picture, to know what what the purpose of life is, to fit yourself in and and to have have direction in your life. Well, we have Isaiah uh, as well as Habakkuk says very simply, the whole earth will be covered with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All of these various concerns we may have, all, all the things your heart may be concerned about, many good things, they all come back in some way, to this fundamental idea. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know God? I think there's, there's probably two types of people in this room. Uh, one, one type of person would be the unconcerned on that point. Either you don't want to know God, you've never wanted to know God, or maybe if you did once, it's been a while, and, and at this point, you're not interested that's one type of person that could be here. Then there, there could be many of you, I expect, who are truly concerned people, but struggling with that concern. You want to know God, but you don't want it all the time, and you don't want it as much as you know that you ought to want it. And if, if that's what describes you, really either of these categories, but especially that second, you fit well with the psalmist and the prayers here. As we go back to these prayers, we see... Uh, the, the negative side of that concern, he starts to explain all the things that are messing him up in his pursuit of knowing God. Again, look at verse 9. He says, How can a young man keep his way pure? I suspect he writes this because he is a young man. Uh, but I, I want you to be able to see yourself in that phrase. Uh, Because there are always situations in life that are new to you. There's always areas where you lack experience. There are areas where you find that you don't have the maturity to cope with it properly. And so he shows that's that's one of the things that holds him back. Verse 10, he, he prays, Do not let me wander from your commandments. All through Psalm 119, there's an image of a pathway, and that pathway represents life. Uh, Walking on this path represents uh, the proper life. Straying from this path uh, represents uh, sin and turning aside. Uh, And as I've read Psalm 119, I've become convinced it's a sheep path. Uh, That as he walks on it, he recognizes he wanders like a sheep. In fact, that's what he says in the very final verse of this psalm, all the way to verse 176. He says, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Not only does he have the difficulty of youth, he has the difficulty of his spiritual foolishness and his ignorance of his wandering that continues to to send him in different directions. But then, probably the most basic problem is what he says in verse 11. He says, Your word I have treasured in my heart, that I may not sin against you. His fundamental problem is that he has sin in himself. His sin nature, that is his, his natural inclination toward evil, and then all the actual sins that he's done as a result of that all of the the things that he has done to break his relationship with God. And if you are concerned positively to know God, then you will also find yourself concerned about these sorts of things too. Your lack of experience, your not knowing what to do, your wandering, your distraction, and then especially, even when you know what to do and you're not wandering and the path is clear, your decisions to step off of it anyway. And all of these things detract from knowing God. But if you are a concerned person, then there is good news. Because knowing God is not 
first about you finding God. It's about God finding you. The, the, the person that solves this problem is not the sheep. It's the shepherd. And that's what we see in this psalm as we see him coming to God in prayer. That's what we see uh, in the gospel, in the big picture of the scripture. We see Jesus come to the world and say to everyone, I am the good shepherd. Jesus says, I know the wandering and the sinfulness and everything that is wrong in your life. But he says, come to me. That is why Jesus lived his life on this earth, doing what is right. That's why he died on the cross, because he was paying the penalty for our sins. That's why he rose from the dead. He continues to shepherd us. He lives today to shepherd his people. And you know, the psalmist who wrote this, he, he hadn't met Jesus. He lived before Jesus came. He, he knew the promises of God, though. He knew, he knew the big idea, which is that God says he is good and that he's going to take care of his people. And so he says something remarkable after making the prayers of verses 9 through 11. He says very simply, Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. If you want a, a doctrine of God, uh, a proper teaching and proper understanding of God, you can't do much better than this statement for a summary. Blessed are you, O Lord. God is the eternally blessed one. Eternally, uh, perfectly happy, perfectly at peace. Uh, the God who is love. That is who God is. He believes that. He knows that. But it's not just that God is away somewhere um, enjoying his own blessedness, but he recognizes God has come to us. And so he prays, teach me your statutes. And that's, that's the prayer of faith. You know, wh whether you have been largely unconcerned with knowing God or you've been very concerned with knowing God, it still comes back to repeating this over and over as, as the cry of your heart. Lord, teach me. Lord, teach me. If you want to know God, you need a concerned heart. But as we look at this psalm, we also see something else. If you want to know God, you need to develop a committed heart. Develop a concerned heart and develop a committed heart. Uh, this portion of Psalm 119 is full of a lot of very practical details. Now, it's not just about what is the big goal, why, why should you do that, but it's also how. How do you go about knowing God? And as we work through a series of applications, you'll notice that these are mostly Bible applications. They have to do with the Word of God. Uh, this psalmist understands if you want to know someone, uh, you have to listen to them. Your communication. Uh, that's how you know people. You, you listen to them, they listen to you. But especially for us with God, we must listen to Him. And as he goes through this, he recognizes the words of Scripture, the words that we have in the Bible, are the very words of God. And so this is not, I want to know God, and so I'm shooting in the dark wherever I can find something that looks like God to me, that's where I go. Uh, really, his doctrine of Scripture, again, he, he understands who God is as the blessed one. He understands what the Bible is. We find it in the word, your. Walk through the verses with me again. Verse 9, keep it according to your word. Verse 10, your commandments. Verse 11, your word. Verse 12, your statutes. Verse 13, the ordinances of your mouth. Verse 14, your testimonies. Verse 15, your precepts, your ways. Verse 16, your statutes, your word. Why do we have applications that are all about the Bible when we talk about knowing God because it's God's Bible because this is God speaking to us and so that's how he will teach us to develop a committed heart so what are the practical steps that he offers to us the first is from verse 11 treasure scripture treasure scripture <clears throat> he says your word I have treasured in my heart <clears throat> that I may not sin against you <clears throat> This, this phrase is, is more than memorizing scripture. It's, it's about loving it and meditating on it and so on. But as I, as I consider this, I can't think of any way to make it about less than memorizing scripture. Uh, I don't see that as a step that we can skip 
as we keep this commandment. <clears throat> this is a call at a very basic level <clears throat> to memorize these words, uh, to memorize Bible verses, to memorize Bible passages, to know what it says and to keep it in our hearts, to treasure it there, to store it there, to, to put it in a safe place where we won't lose it. Have you memorized any scripture? What have you memorized recently? Do you regularly memorize scripture? I'll, I'll mention several practical ideas about memori memorization. First, uh, this is probably obvious to you, not everyone will have the same capacity. Uh, not, not everybody, so, some people can memorize whole books of the Bible, um, and that's great. Uh, some people can't, and that's okay. The question is, are you engaged in this practice? You know, some people will memorize something, and you ask them about it 20 years later, they'll know what it was. Some people will memorize it, and you ask them an hour later, and they're, they're not quite sure. Uh, God has made our minds differently. But do you take the time to memorize Scripture? Another consideration as we memorize, often we, we want to think, okay, what's the most practical Bible verse I can memorize? The one that, that's going to be most effective for my life. Um, don't worry too much about that. There are some verses that are rightly famous, and those are good ones to start with. Uh, but think of it as, ra rather than having uh, the immediate impact, think of it as building sort of a first aid kit. Uh, if you build a first aid kit to, to go out into the wilderness or something, you're not going to put in a bunch of things that you absolutely expect you'll need and leave everything else out. Now you want to put in things you might need because you don't know what's going to happen. And then when you need it, it's there and it's available. Memorizing scripture is a lot like that. You want to memorize various kinds of verses from different books and so on so that you're preparing yourself holistically. Uh, again, practical. It's, it's helpful to have a partner. It's helpful to have a plan. Uh, there are lots of good, uh, good systems and things out there that, that you can use. Uh, do it with others. And, and of course, remember that, that this, like, like any discipline, like anything that you sit down and you just have to work at it, uh, it can be abused, especially in this case. You know, the ones who have the skill to memorize whole chapters, you could do that just because you're proud of yourself. Um, and that's not a right way to do it. But, but again, it takes us back to that, that center verse, verse 12, blessed are you, O Lord. As we continue to humble ourselves before God, to see this as not an effort to impress other people, not an effort to check a box, but I am doing this as a very basic way by which I know God. That's why I'm memorizing these words. That's why I treasure these words. Because I desire to know God. So first, treasure scripture. Verse 13 gives us a second practical idea. Speak the scripture out loud. Verse 13, with my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. He says, I've done it with my lips. I've said it out loud. You know, maybe you've had times where you've, you've practiced personal devotions for a long time and then you sort of feel that you get stuck. Um, one simple change you might make, whatever scripture you're reading, read it all out loud. Uh, that's strange today. People don't do that today. People used to do that a lot more um, in, in the past. But try it. Uh, reading out loud makes things different. It puts a little bit of different kind of effort into it. And so he says, that's what I do. With my lips, I repeat uh, the ordinances of your mouth. Uh, this is something you can do not only alone. This is something that's good to do with others. So, and so especially, I think he commends teaching here. Uh, find someone that you can teach about the Bible. Uh, there's a lot of children in this church. Grab one. Uh, and teach them something about the Bible. Uh, uh, teach, teach a friend. It doesn't have to be, you know, I'm qualified to be a Sunday school teacher or something like that. Find opportunities to teach the Bible. That's a way to continue to grow in knowing God. So speak scripture out loud. Uh, the third thing he teaches us to do, rejoice in scripture. Verse 14, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. Is it possible to learn to enjoy something? You know, often we think, well, I enjoy what I enjoy and I don't enjoy what I don't, but yes, of course it is. Everything you do and you enjoy, you did for the first time at some point. Uh, and that's what we're encouraged to do here. Learn to enjoy your Bible. Learn to enjoy reading and studying the Bible. And uh, there, 
there are various ways you can study and read the Bible, and I'd encourage you to find something that comes more naturally to you. Maybe there's a certain genre or book of scripture uh, that's interesting to you. Maybe you really love Old Testament things, or maybe you really enjoy the Gospels. Or w- Take some time and do, do extended study and enjoy it. He, he calls us to enjoy this uh, like we enjoy all riches. How, how do you enjoy your money? You, know, you take it to what you're interested in and you spend it on that. Do the same thing with the scripture. Find what you're interested in and invest in that. Again, remembering why you're doing this. What's bringing you joy? It's because through this, you know God. Rejoice in Scripture. Fourth, he encourages us to concentrate on Scripture. Verse 15, he says, I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. Two, two verbs, meditate and regard. Both of them are, are synonyms that mean think really hard. That's, that's what he is encouraging you to do, to think about it. Uh, meditation, especially when you hear it today, you might, you might think of practices that um, are becoming more common uh, through relaxation techniques or yoga or various activities where they encourage you to empty your mind and, and find peace. Uh, that's not what this is encouraging. This is, this is suggesting to you to do the opposite, to fill your mind with Scripture and think about what it means. Uh, now, this command... Comes, comes with a warning. Uh, if you start thinking hard about Scripture, uh, it will challenge you. There, there will be things that you read and say, I, I read this here, and I read that there, and I think those contradict each other. And the Bible's not supposed to do that. What's going on? Or, or you'll read it and think, that's, that's not how things are supposed to be. That's offensive. Or, or that's just strange. I don't like that. And in a way, as you read the Bible and you start to have those sorts of thoughts, that that can be a very good sign because that means that you're not just using the Bible as a religious prop to tell yourself you're a good person. That means you're interacting with something very different than you. Uh, And the Bible is very different than all of us. Uh, Even culturally, the language it was written, it's a very foreign book, but even more than all that, it comes from God. And God is very different than we are. And he will challenge us. And he will make us think. But again, that's just an opportunity to dig in further. As you start to think, as you start to get challenged, you you might get hooked because you want to solve the problem. And that's a good thing. To find those things that you really want to think through and to meditate on. Again, you will find that you are coming to know God more as you study his word. So concentrate on scripture. Fifth, we're encouraged to make memories with scripture make memories verse 16 he says i shall delight in your statutes i shall not forget your word you know what what are the memories that you remember it's probably some of your favorite things that you've done that that why do you remember it because it was your favorite uh we're encouraged to do that with scriptures Uh, i can still remember where i was standing in my college dorm room when i had a realization about what justification meant in the Bible. And, and I hope I never forget that because I can, you know, I can go back to that and, and review with myself what it means that, that God loves me and he declares me righteous for Christ and not for what I've done for myself. You can do the same. Take note of those times in your life when God's word really sticks and really makes an impact associate the scripture with significant events. When God does something in your life, take note of it. This will help you to have this delight in God's word that keeps you from forgetting it. So five applications related to scripture. A sixth one is here as well, though, and that is simply this, pray. Pray. If you want to develop a committed heart, you need to pray It's not any one verse, but it's all the verses. Maybe you've noticed as we've read, these are all prayers. In fact, uh, Psalm 119 is famous uh, for mentioning the Word of God in almost every verse. Uh, It should also be just as famous because every verse except the first three is a prayer. It's showing us that we come to know God by hearing from Him and then speaking back to Him 
Again, it's often as simple as that prayer in verse 12. Teach me your statutes. So treasure scripture. Speak scripture out loud. Rejoice in scripture. Concentrate on scripture. Make memories with scripture. Pray. I know that's quite a long list, so one more practical idea. Maybe just pick one. (laughs) You can keep the list for later, but, but pick one or two of these things that you want to work on, to to be committed to as you seek to know God. And think about your heart. How is your heart? Are, are Are you concerned? Are you committed? You know, whatever else may happen, while I'm here, while Pastor Joe is here, uh, while we're together as a congregation, my hope is that we will all come to know God more. That is what I would desire to happen. And so let's learn to do that. Let's rely on God to teach us. Let's pray together. Our Lord, this is our prayer together now. Teach us your statutes. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief. Lord, we desire to know you, but we sin in many ways. We pray that by your word today and in the coming weeks and months and years that you would build us up, that you would draw us close to yourself, that we would know of your blessedness and of how you've come to us, of your love for us, that we might in turn love you as we know you more. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.